Phew, what in God's name did I just witness? Some kind of, well, for lack of a better word, I'd call it some kind of slimy blob. Just in the spot where the blood trail ended. Heck, if I didn't know better, I'd have thought that slimy thing had been sucking that very blood right off of the rocks. Like some damn big blood-eating jellyfish oozing up on dry land looking for sustenance. Horrifying, but surely harmless. Jonas says the FBI would be interested. It's good to see him again. I better be careful, though, so he doesn't steal the show. Coming in and talking big with his new jurisdiction. I gotta be smart so uh, I don't get outwitted. Speaking of wit, what's the deal with this British egghead? Coming down to a town like Denton for business? I don't think so. He probably knows a damn lot more than he lets on. Ain't no one stealing the show from Benny Clyde Rosberg. This is Red Moon Roleplaying. We rejoin. Terror at Makeout Point. Last time we saw our characters, they were at the eponymous Makeout Point where a horrible tragedy appears to have occurred. Chip Johnson and his girlfriend were enjoying a night on the coast when something attacked them. It seems Susie ran all the way from the site of the attack to Jimmy's bar and grill where she alerted the locals to something terrible having taken place. Unfortunately for Chip, this left him alone at Makeout Point, where he was dragged from his car by something aquatic. When our heroes, Dr. White, BC, and Agent Faulkner arrived, all they found was a thick trail of blood leading from the car down to the beach, along the shoreline, and into the caves. Caves of ill repute in Denton, Alabama. Various supposed crimes that have occurred there. Our heroes followed the blood trail, where it neatly cut off and turned to a trail of slime. Only two characters saw this slime. BC and Agent Faulkner then saw the slime retract suddenly, like a tongue. At the crime scene itself, Dr. White scooped up a sample of the slime that he found inside the car and kept it within a vial. Strange roars and gurgles were heard down in the caves, driving our three heroes to escape the area. They briefly encountered Sheriff Reese, who seemed ill-tempered and not well disposed to these outsiders prying around one of his crime scenes. Our FBI agent Faulkner proved his jurisdiction over maritime crimes, driving the sheriff to turn tail and depart. In the interim, the deputies arrived and Faulkner set them to work securing the crime scene until the morning where it could be examined in daylight. Now three stalwarts, they returned to BC's home where his mother, still awake, cooked them all some stew, not prying about what had shaken them so much the night before. It's as they finish this stew, and BC's mother is departing the dining room, having met these charming outsiders, that we leave our three in the kitchen to the sound of the ticking clock and what they had just witnessed. That thing, BC... A delicious food, food, by the way, but uh, that thing, it moved. I swear it. You can see my uh, spirits uh, somehow uh, recovered now. I'm a, I'm a, I look a bit happier having some of my Mars good food. And uh, also having you in, uh, at, in, in my old home. It's, it feels nice and familiar. But... Uh, Yes, now that we re-entered this dark topic, I, uh, you see my smile fading a little bit again, and I say, 
Yeah, yeah. There was something going on there. It's uh, something uh, I'd never seen before. You took a sample, didn't you, Doctor? It looked just like that. Can I take a moment to examine the vial on my person? I have to admit I was reluctant to come to this dinner scenario. I would have preferred to have gone straight back to my equipment that I have in my hotel. However, I confess the hour was late and I was hungry. Still, I'm here now. I give BC a look. Yes, I collected this sample at the scene. It looks different in this artificial light, as if it has changed in the hour or so since you last collected it, and certainly you've been checking it routinely. This is quite a find, whatever it is. It could be any number of fluids, but something has compelled you to keep looking at it to see whether it would do anything. And it has. After you've finished eating and you check it again, showing it to the other two, you find that this formerly clear, viscous liquid has turned crystalline and green. What a strange reaction, I say aloud. Possibly chemical. I imagine perhaps the element now being out of its preferred environment is changing rapidly. Ugh, I should have taken it back to the lab sooner. Or perhaps this, uh, this thing you have there, it's, uh, some, some kind of remnant of a, of a main body, if you know what I mean. Because what we saw sure looked like a one big pile of slime. You have made a very astute observation, despite the manner in which you foolishly spoken it. <laughs> big slime, indeed. But may have a point, boy. We are going to need to investigate those caves, although I have a feeling we're going to be doing it for very different reasons. I must say I'm surprised, Agent Faulkner. You were already investigating this matter? You had the papers ready? Awfully convenient. Well, as I think I have said before, the Bureau knows more than one might think, and uh, there is indeed a reason I am here, which I cannot go into any further details on, as you probably can understand. I must ask, both of you, I I don't think I need to, but that you please try to... you please make sure to keep this quiet. We do not need to get the, the local townspeople any more worried than they already are. We do not wish to cause a panic here, after all. Uh, might get in the way of our investigation. The stories will be about some kind of animal attack, I'm, I'm certain, and if they aren't, that's the story that I will plant. Let's stick to that, shall we? I, uh, give you an evaluating look as you say all this, and I nod thoughtfully. So I'm guessing you're gonna start bringing down your boys and get this all examined up? Something like that, yes. But we need to uh, continue the investigation tomorrow, and, and you having seen this thing, whatever it is, and your knowledge of this doctor, I'm not sure where it's coming from, but uh, it remains something very, very valuable. So if you wouldn't be against it, I certainly would like you to join me at the, at the site. I insist... And for now, I shall keep up your veneer of secrecy and mystery, as your government is so happy to do. I am, after all, a guest at your government's pleasure. But know this. If you discover something very important, I shall not be just selling it to your government for the highest price. The world always needs to know the truth, after all. The first world, yes. The first world needs to know. There's a... At the door, and then a hollering. Rasberg, you in there? Uh, you recognize the voice as old Jack from the bar. The last time you saw him was when he was in a bit of a panic about where his grandson Chip had got to. There's a hammering on the door again. Oh, that's old Jack. Just uh, let me go get this. I'm sorry. BC, you in there? Have you found my boy? I'm running uh, to get the door. Maybe, uh... 
maybe you want to say something too, Jonas, since you were going to take a lead on the case and uh, everything. Certainly. Yes, and I join uh, BC at the door, and uh, I hold up my badge again just in case he hadn't caught the fact that I am with the FBI. Old Jack, a uh, stout man, never without his hat, thick white beard, glares at the both of you when you open the door. It started to rain outside. He makes for quite a sorry state. It looks like he's been walking halfway across town, and he probably has, to get word to Chip's parents that something's happened to their, their son, and now he's trying to find the people who were looking for him. And he was never updated. So, yeah. Unhappy is one word to sum old Jack up. What in hell is going on? Come in, come in, Jack. I'm so I'm so sorry. Uh, we should we should have talked to you, of course, straight away. But you might not believe it, but things have taken a strange turn here. Uh, if if you want to come in from the rain, he's he stomps in and says, "I went straight to the sheriff's office, and what does he tell me? He says the sheriff ain't got nothing to do with this." I say, "What do you mean, sheriff?" He says, "Some FBI guy," and he points at Agent Faulkner has taken over this case. So I thought, well, at least it's in safe hands. And then where's this FBI guy based? No one knows. So I go around every hotel in town. I know there ain't many. And I ask for you by name. No one's seen you all night. And so I come to the next people, the people that he walked off with to go to the coast to look for my grandson. And where do I find you? That he sniffs the air. Eating Mrs. B.C.'s stew. Well, clearly the life of my grandson is a great priority to you Hoover boys up in the city. What, what, as I said when I first came in, what in the hell is going on? Explain it to me. Where's Chip? Calm down, Jack. Can I get you something to drink? Come in and sit down. Sit down. I've been drinking all night. I don't need more to drink. I want answers. I understand, Mr. Johnson, that this is a very difficult time for you. You must know that the government is doing their utmost to find your boy. We we searched the caves, and we were unable to locate him in the dark. It, it's simply not possible right now to, to, to find any more tracks. Uh, we will resume the search in the morning. But I must tell you, Mr. Johnson, uh, as you may already know, there seems to have been some kind of, of attack, uh, possibly an animal. Uh, the car was in, in bad shape, and uh, there was blood tracks, so we fear the worst, but please understand that we will do our utmost to find Chip. He's uh, turned incredibly pale from the point at which you mentioned the caves. He sits himself down without ceremony. Cave, the caves? Oh, no, no, oh, no. Oh, God. Well, do you know something about the caves? Those caves been flooded for the best part of ten years. We we set it up so, you know, shifted the sand, the rocks. Not nothing good had never came from those caves. You understand? Well, I heard the stories, but I didn't know that it was, you're saying they we they were flooded by our people in the in the town. Yeah, well, there was so much. It seemed every few years or so, some someone was going climbing down there, taking a date down there, or hiding a body down there in that one case, and it, as I said, never came to no good. People had had accidents, there was blood spilled, bad tempers, and, well, we just decided as a community we'd flood the cave and that would be that. Well, that, uh, that sure explains the strange sounds we heard. Strange? What do you mean, strange sounds? Well, uh, I heard sounds that sound like uh, some kind of gurgling. Uh, I think that could have been the the water perhaps emptying from from the caves if you if you previously, well, you know, like you said, you'd flood them, and now perhaps if the water is retracting somehow. Yeah, yeah, that that that's probably what it is. Yeah. Mm. I am uh, reminded of those caves. Actually, nothing good ever happened there, and after I got kicked off the football team. Me and my, well, less reputable friends, we we did hide some of the stuff we had shoplifted down there. It's a scary place, and being back there again was uh, quite the experience. Uh, I turned back to him. Yes, so, 
do you have some place to to go tonight to to be with with people you it's important to not be alone at times like this well i'll be back i'll be going back to my children and making sure they's okay but uh, i guess i also come in form a messenger your um that, that girl susie susie wilkins the uh injured girl yeah how is she well last i heard she she woken up and i gotta tell you agent faulkner ain't it uh this story you use telling and what she's telling, they don't add up. They don't add up one bit. Uh, some someone's telling a lie here, or someone's got confused. And yeah, she sure looked like she was turned around, but she was saying she only got those wounds while she was running back to the bar. Uh, someone attacked her, and uh, and she don't know what happened to Chip. So I don't. I don't rather know what what's going on, I, I, I must say. Well, it's important to note that the young girl in question was both delirious and feverish from her wounds. Anything she says has to be taken with a grain of salt. However, be assured that we shall collaborate with the young lady and her information will be taken into account. Isn't that right, Agent Faulkner? Indeed, it is important for the investigation to hear her story. She is the last one to see Chip before his disappearance. So we must, uh, we must interview her. She's at the uh, sheriff's station in the uh, in the nurses' room. There, you know, uh, she 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 insisted not leaving Denton, and although the uh, hospital boys in their wagon they insisted, she was pretty much stitched up in the back of the bus and. She's kept there under observation, because I guess our new sheriff knows a little bit about first aid. I don't know. Well, she didn't. we didn't see nothing like some sort of animal that could uh, have given her that those scrapes that she had in her face. Not, not in the spot that we were, so uh, I look at uh, uh, Agent Faulkner or Jonas, and I say, it, was, it, it is possible that she was attacked on the way back, isn't it? It certainly is. It certainly is. We must learn more. We must speak to her directly. But, uh, Mr. Johnson, I think it's uh, it's time for you to go back to your children. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. And, again, the United States government is doing its utmost to find Chip. Rest assured in that. It's your tax dollars at work now. He, he cringes at that. But for the first time, he takes his hat off, uh, revealing the ball top to his head and the, the shaggy white hair flowing down around the sides and back of it and he's crunching up the rim of his floppy straw hat and looks up at you with sad eyes I, I don't I don't think you is ever gonna find Chip Agent Falker. I think if if he if he went down into those caves there's a reason we flooded them them caves, and I I remember I remember you as a boy. Now now that I come to think of it, Jonas, I heard one of them. I heard BC just address you as such. Yeah, I remember you, and you remember you know those pla- that ca- those caves are they're bad. It's a bad place, and if if Chip went down there, hell. Now, don't be saying that. I'm sure we, I'm sure we'd be able to find him somehow. Uh, I'm sure this, uh, whatever happened, it's, uh, you know, maybe uh, a night sort of trail off. I don't have anything to say, and I try to re- recover this situation. Like, are you sure you don't want something to drink? No, no. I need to keep my head clear now. I need to think about what I'm going to say to his parents. Uh, thank you all for your time, and I'm sorry I uh, came in with such uh, gusto. You know, it's family. Family's all in Denton. It's perfectly understandable, Mr. Johnson. Perfectly understandable, I say, and I nod. I frown a little, saying nothing. I do actually, inward, have a little tinge of sympathy for this man losing a child. Yet, I can't help but be slightly annoyed by this BC's constant, naive optimism 
Even if it's comforting, it's... stupid. The man doesn't need to be told lies at this stage. And I give him a little awkward look. But I say nothing. Old Jack um, stumbles out of the house. Uh, clearly... Clearly convinced that he's never going to see his grandson again. Hmm. Well, that was... sad. Indeed. However, we need to focus on tomorrow's work. Oh, Sir Agent Faulkner, your government involvement actually is going to make this a lot easier. You see, I am also going to be calling some of my contacts. Your murder investigation, of course, I can't stop. But I believe these caves could be very worth some investigation of themselves. I shall be calling in some help. Some backup, if you will, for my own investigations into the caves. I trust we'll be able to run these operations simultaneously. As long as they do not get in the way of uh, our investigation, I have nothing against that. More eyes in this place will hopefully allow us to find more clues. Good. I shall be calling them in the morning. I'll probably take them some time, but don't worry about the expenses. Your government's paying for it all. And uh, as they uh, start speaking to each other, I uh, I normally wouldn't be interested in this kind of business, uh, government business or anything, but there's something stinging in the back of my mind that I need to I need to get involved. I need to uh, prove my part in this. This could be this could be an opportunity for me, perhaps, to do something, to prove something, maybe something big. I. Uh, I listen to you two speak for a while, and then I say, and I'm uh, sure I could help out with something. If you need an extra pair of hands or anything, I, you, you, like you said, I, I've, uh, I've seen the thing firsthand. You have indeed, BC. That will be useful. Uh, no one else has. So I would love to have you with me for this. We go way back, and I trust you. You see a wide grin spread across my face. I frown a little, raising an eyebrow. I think to myself I have absolutely no idea what use this boy will be, other than smiling and saying silly things. But I will not question the agent's motivations, and I will simply nod and say, I'm sure you'll be of some use, boy. I believe it is time for us to visit Susie and uh, speak to her. I... She must get proper care at the the hospital if she cannot stay here for forever. They said that she was at the sheriff's station, yes, at the nurse's office there. Up to you. Do you want to do that tonight before the morning comes? Or do you want to do it when uh, when the sun has risen? Or is the plan to go back down to the beach once it's daytime again? You've got a few places you can go. I suppose it could be wise to talk to the girl now to collaborate our stories, but then the hours shall be late, and I believe I wish to return to my own abodes to begin some analysis. I'll be making my phone calls in the morning. Understandable. Yes, but it is important for us to speak to her before too many new memories are formed. She's going to try to make sense of what has happened, and she may create events and ways to connect the thing that aren't actually real. It is best to speak to her immediately, while the information is still fresh. In that case, the group splits up, and I'm more than happy for that to happen. Uh, Dr. White returns to his lodgings, uh, where he can perhaps perform some experiments on this fluid before bedtime. Uh, Agent Faulkner is determined to go and speak to Susie before her testimony is interfered with. BC, are you going to go with either party or try to, or is there a separate course of investigation you think your character would take I think I promised my my ma to help out in the house uh, now that dad is not here and uh, that I should uh, get those things sorted I uh... I'll tell you this your mother has never really been out of Denton if anyone knows about these caves from way back when your mum is probably someone who would yeah so uh I'm gonna, I'm gonna help her clean things up here, and uh, maybe I can uh, 
ask her one thing or two. Okay, as you stand in the kitchen, washing up with your mother, the other two have departed for their respective destinations. She's shaking her head. Uh, it's such a shame. Such a shame. I know, Ma. These terrible things happen. I don't know. I, I, you you think we won't find him? Oh, well, you know, I, I heard snatches of conversation being in the other room. It wasn't like my ear was pressed up to the door. You almost think definitely that it was. <laughs> Knowing your mother. Uh, but, I don't know. Chip never was a bright boy. He, uh... From from what little I know him, none of those Johnsons were, were terribly sharp. No. Oh, all I'm saying is... Well... And this is the coldest you've ever really seen your mother. Perhaps he got what was coming to him. Oh, Ma, you can't... You... I mean, I know he's uh, not the, the best boy in town, but... I know, I know, I know, and God forgive me for saying it. But he was always gadding around with different girls and... Uh, and he was drinking. And he was poking around down in those caves... Quite often, I understand. So, I don't know. Curiosity killed the cat. Well, you think? Has he, has he been down to the caves before this? They say the Johnson family as well as being fishermen. She stops washing up at this point and levels her finger with you. They got some diving set. Back when the fish started drying up, they was looking for underwater, underwater exploration. So Chip and his father, they were... Uh, Moseying around down there, trying to find what they could find, maybe start up some crab fishing, and rather than just toss a line and hope to get lucky, they was looking for pools of the things, schools of things. I ain't no expert. Well, word is in the uh, bridge club that they was, uh, as I say, poking around in the caves back when they were still flooded. You saying they was diving down into those depths or whatever was down there? That, that That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. All I'm saying is, well, maybe he got a bit too comfortable down there and... Well, he shouldn't have. He shouldn't have got comfortable down there. That's what I'm saying. There's so many... So many bad things have happened down in those caves. Hell, uh, uh, sorry. What, do you, what has happened down there? I mean, what, what other things are there? Oh, you know the stories, B.C.? You don't, you don't want me to repeat them in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, yeah, I know about the people gone missing and that, and, uh... But recently? That, that was a long time ago, right? Well, she whispers as if there's other people in the room. Well, and you didn't hear this from me, boy. It was only three years ago. Do you remember, uh... There was a woman. She used to uh, she used to run a laundrette. Her name was uh, was Sally Joe. You remember her? She she was a bit older than me. We, but she she was always in the community. Sally Joe. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember Billy Bob having a a, 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 a flirt with her. <laughs> Old as he is. Well, she blanks that remark. Well, Sally Joe, she went, she went missing. And so what people thought. Like you said, people like Billy Bob, Sally Joe, despite her age, and she should have known better, she was a party girl. And so someone just assumed she'd got in someone's truck and would be turning up around here sooner or later. Well, that's not what happened. What happened? She washed, huh? she washed up on the beach. Uh, and so first thought was she went out for some kind of moonlight swim. And, uh, and the tide caught her. It happens. It's happened before. Yeah, yeah. But it was, uh, it was the marks on her body. She'd been mauled by something. People were talking sharks. Uh, 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 some, some idiots thought she'd got caught in a net and got tied up and scraped along the rocks. I know, I know, this is all... Uh, this is all horrifying. Well, it's all possible stories. But, well... 
Doc Hensley, God rest his soul, died just this last year. He, you, he done all the uh, coroner work around here for as long as I remember. And he swore to me at Bridge. He said the marks on her body were exact same as the marks on that other young man, that one who was murdered, uh, I guess, 10, 20 years ago, somewhere between then, in the cave. Remember when his body was found and no one ever caught the killer? And back then they was all talking about someone being stabbed to death, cut open like a fish, and supposedly, according to Doc Hensley, as old as he was, this is exactly what had happened to her. And, and we all said, couldn't it have just been rocks against her skin? And they, he said, no, this was a precise act. Someone had done this to her and either dropped her in the water or... Or, and this is what we thought, she had been down in those caves. And whoever did that to the man, I guess, 16 years ago, did this to her just three years ago. Hmm. So that got us all to thinking there's a killer in this community. Yeah, but surely a killer wouldn't be living down in some flooded caves. Well, that's what we thought. How could he? The, the, the entire cave was flooded. It was only in the last month or so it's been all drained out, I guess. Yeah. I uh, I was down there, Mum. I, I heard uh, the sounds coming from there. It sounded... Well, if I gotta be honest, it didn't. I wasn't sure if it sounded like water or some kind of horrific creature. Oh, BC, you and your imagination, you stop that. Trying to give me nightmares. Yeah. Well, as you know, uh. So, what about uh, the girl who's now down at the station? Do you think uh, that's the same marks? Is that the same kind of thing that attacked her, too? Well, I don't know. I didn't see these marks. You, I overheard you talking about it being like a bird's talons and this, that, and the other. I don't know. I never, I never worked with the dark, but it could be. I guess. All I'm saying is, the young people, if they've got half a brain, they don't go down even close to make out point, because bad things happen in that part of town. Well, now he's going to get one big old investigation down there. Well, this is the first time government have been interested in anything going on in Denton. I watch yourself around that Faulkner. I know he, you grew up with him and he was straight in his arrow was he, when he was at school, but now he's got, his mind's going to have been tampered with by those government boys in Washington. I know you've been up into the city as well, but still, it's not the same what you do and what he does. Nah. You know me, Ma... I ain't never gonna change. She gives you a hug at that point, you know, one arm tightly around you, showing you the actual strength when she gives you a good squeeze. I know you, BC, you ain't never gonna change your, your mummy's boy. Well, if there's anything I can help him out with, I'm gonna see if I can do that. I'm seeing as I'll be in town anyway, until Dad gets better. Just don't let him play you like he's some damn piper. Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll keep my mind sharp. You do that. So we're going to cut to Sheriff Reese's office. Yes. I have taken my car there, and uh, I'm moving towards the nurse's station. Is the, um, is it open? First of all, it is, after all, quite late. Is it manned? Uh, the light, the light is on, and uh, yeah, the the door is unlocked. You see, Sheriff Reese is in the uh, in the sheriff's office. It's pretty late for anyone to be manning the station, but obviously he's going to be here if there's a patient. Um, you don't believe there's anyone in the cells, at least not without checking. He doesn't look up and see you. Even even when you pull up with your lights on, he doesn't look up to see who it is. All right. Well, I stop the car. I, I get out and uh, I uh, move inside. I try to make sure that I catch his uh, attention. I need to let him know what I'm going to do here. That I'm going to be interviewing the the patient. Agent Faulkner, he says without looking up. Thank you for your cooperation. Your deputies have been most helpful. I shall uh, interview the uh, patient that you have here now. I hope that is not a problem. You ain't even gonna give her a night of rest? She's being attacked. 
he looks up at you now, and rather witheringly. Or is that the way you do things in the city? You can say that that is the way that we do things in the city. We want the truth. Thank you, Sheriff Reese, I say, and I move towards the patient. Before you go in there, there's something you should know. Yes? Accent aside, I'm not from around here. I ain't from Alabama, neither. I'm from further south. I'm from Texas. And I came out here because I needed a change of scenery. I worked in small towns before and big cities. But this place, Agent Falconer, it's got secrets. There's people who want to be hiding things from people like you and me. And while I don't necessarily see eye to eye with men in suits and sunglasses from the nation's capital, you need to keep me on side. So keep me informed. You understand? That is only fair. I shall keep you informed of what we find. This is your town, after all. Well, that's the idea. Thank you again. I say, and now I do move to, to speak with Susie. Susie is awake in bed. Uh, you could almost be mistaken for thinking she's dead at first glance because she's just laying there with her eyes fixed open, but as soon as you step into the room, her pupils dart to you. She looks, again, terrified, like she's just woken from a nightmare. She doesn't recognize you. I uh, bring out my badge and and I move closer. S Susie, uh, my name is Agent Faulkner. I, I I helped you when you when you came to to, to Jim's Bar and Grill. Um, I'm with the bureau, uh, with the FBI. I, I'm investigating what has happened here. We're, we're trying to find Chip. We want to try and find out what has happened to you. Can I ask you some questions? I got as far as Jimmy's bar and grill. I remember I remember hammering on doors uh, whenever I found a house, and no one was answering. Even when lights were on, no one was answering. And and I got as far as Jimmy's, and that... Yeah, I, I, I think I remember now that... I remember a few people treating me, listening to me, and then it's all just black until I woke up here. Uh, I, I was told that I... Uh, I, I refuse to leave Denon and be treated in a decent hospital. I, I can't, for the laugh of me, think why I would decide something like that, but as I guess I'm as treated as I can be. They say I'm short on blood, so I may need to take it easy for a couple of weeks. Chip, what, 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 what happened to Chip? He's missing. We found his car. There seems to have been some violence uh, we believe that that he has been attacked by something an animal perhaps we're searching the the area it's, uh, it's around the caves you, you know the area yes oh she's quite shy at this sort of brought back down to reality yeah i, I know i know officer uh is, is is that what i call you are you an officer you can call me jonas i'm from Denton. I, I grew up here. Oh, well, you, you're a bit older than me, so you have to excuse my my not knowing you offhand, Jonas, but yes, we was down on Make Out Point, and we was having a good time, you know, listening to music. I know just how it is. I was there myself when I was your age. It's a beautiful place. It, yeah, it, at some nights it's beautiful, and I've been there a couple of nights. Uh, with, with the same boy, you understand. Chip and I, we, we're going steady. We, we've been uh, together a little while now. And yeah, pe people say he's been uh, stepping out on me from time to time. But I, I think he, his heart's in the right place. So we, we was down there anyhow. And we was, you know, having a kiss. And... I remember hearing a sound. It was like uh, someone was watching us. I thought, oh no, some some creep, some mouth breather in the in the tree line is perving on us, you know? Mm. Yes. And I told 
chip as much. I said, Chip, there's someone out there in the trees. And he, of course, dismissed my concern and tried to give me another kiss. But I was adamant. When I'm, when I'm making my mind up on something, that's what it is. And so I wasn't happy. And so he got out of the car and he walked out into the tree line for a while. Called out a bit with some threats. Came back with a shrug. And we sat back down in the car and we got back to it. And, uh, well, what happened next is where things get confusing. Confusing, you say? How so? Well, do you ever get it when it feels like you can hear the blood rushing in your ears? You know, where, when it's like your everything is deafeningly loud and crashing up against your brain. Do you ever get that? I think I know what you refer to, yes. Was that how it felt? Suddenly it was overwhelming. It was like we was... It was like we was wrapped... Uh, you're going to have to excuse my... The, the words I use, I, I can't think how best else to describe it, but it was like we was wrapped in some kind of cocoon all of a sudden, and there was just us, and it was all hot, and it was loud, and the blood was rushing, and the waves were crashing. It was like the, the, the sea was closer to us than it was when we first started, and it wasn't like we was on the beach, and the tide had come in and caught us by surprise. We were up on the rocks, it w but it was like we were surrounded by water. And that's when it happened. It was like an explosion. A I remember a squeal of metal tearing. And I've heard it before. I've, I've seen a, a, a automobile accident before, and it was the same. It was like metal tearing off its... It was tearing apart. Like something was grabbing two halves and just ripping it down the middle. And before either of us could react, I remember Chip's face... We was kissing, and he was pulled off of my lips. And I remember that shock stare on his face, like he was caught halfway between pleasure and absolute terror. And suddenly he was dragged off of me, his mouth still open and his eyes wide open, and I can picture it like he's right there in front of me right now and he was just pulled out of the car and he was screaming and hollering and I I don't know what happened next Jonas I, I may have fainted I may have just fled I, all I remember was when I was on the trail and I was running and I remember feeling sticky and greasy and like I'd been showered in his in his blood, but I wasn't. I, I it didn't. It just felt like that, and I. That's when it happened. I guess I I don't know how long I'd been running, but guessing on where I was, I must have been about five minutes run down the track, when someone just stepped out of the tree line, and I remember this clear as day. A man in some kind of suit, like a diving suit, you know, like a rubber, uh, frogman kind of thing, just stepped out and grabbed me. And I remember feeling like I was being shook and that he was dragging something along my chest like a... Like, like a knife with with about three or four points and she looks down at the wounds and she, yeah, about four points I guess down from my chest to my to my stomach and I screamed and I tried to get him off and again I can't remember much what happened after that other than he was gone I was running I was knocking on doors I was trying to get into houses no one was answering and then I turned up at Jimmy's and that's where you found me. That's right. The ear, her ear was also in injured or damaged, right? Yeah. Uh, it, and it's... She basically has a uh, gauze and bandage around her head. 
Um, you can't tell how intact her ear is. But she doesn't seem to be aware of it. Your ear, Susie, you are aware that it has also been damaged, yes? She tentatively raises her hand towards where her ear should be. And then she starts screaming and rocking backwards and forwards. And she's, oh god, oh god, Chip! Chip, Chip took it when he was being pulled away. He, he reached out and grabbed me, and I, and I tried to pull away. And all he, all he could get hold of was my, he grabbed my ear of, of all things to, to grab. I, I remember his fingers in my hair, and he was pulling away, and he just hooked into my earring and just, oh, oh my god! And she's, um, she's screaming and crying. At which point, the sheriff. Slams the door open. I think you asked enough qu enough questions, Agent Faulkner. I, I can see that the patient is clearly distressed. Would you mind stepping back out into the main office? Yes. Just one more question, Sheriff Reese, I say. And I, I try to be as calm and, and empathetic as possible to Susie here. Susie, I know it's very difficult... Is there anything else you can remember? Anything that can help me find Chip for you? That's what I want to do. I want to find Chip. And I want to make sure that whatever happened to you happens to no one else. Ch Chip's gone. Chip Chip's in the water now. He he's been he's been taken taken by taken by the sea. Uh, he's been been taken his food hey uh drill and she bursts into tears. And I, uh, I stand up and uh, put my hand on her shoulder. Rest now. And I look up to Sheriff Reese. Well, I think I have the answers that uh, I require. Please make sure that she gets a good night's sleep and that she's taken to the hospital tomorrow. We need to ensure that her um, injuries are properly taken care of. There's only so much we can do here, yes? Well, I'm a former military man, and so I was able to stitch her up as best as I could. But those paramedic boys didn't do a fantastic job. Seems this town's got something of a reputation when it comes to outsiders. He closes the door on Susie, leaving the two of you in the main sheriff's office. Like I said, there's all kinds of dark secrets here, and I'm only just beginning to scratch the surface. That's right. That's right. But um, we will come to to find what, uh, what has truly happened here, and we will make this town safe. Uh, this cannot go on. Uh, this must end here. And I, I look to him. I try to judge what uh, what age is he? Is he? Uh, he spoke of the war. Would uh, would he? He's a bit older than me. You think he would have served in the Second World War, um, well, at least for the second half, uh, like uh, many Americans. Um, based on his age, he's in his early forties. I know we didn't get off uh, to the best start, Sheriff. Um, I hope you understand that I'm only here doing my job, speaking to you as a, as another veteran. I'm just trying to protect our country. That's what I did at Inchon, and what you did where you were. We are on the same side. We are? Yes. I don't know, can I use empathy or manipulation or something? I would like to try to... I think empathy and manipulation is a very good combo to be rolling here. Because, yes, you're trying to get into his head, uh, but not necessarily in a malicious way. You're just trying to um, yeah, turn him to your way of thinking. So, I shall roll Empathy and Manipulation, which gives me seven dice. And I get four successes. We'll go with this just being a resounding success. He puts his hand out. And I, I take it. Jeffrey Reese is my name. Jonas Faulkner. It's very nice to meet you properly this time. And to meet you. Uh, I understand you're actually from around here, Mr. Faulkner. I am indeed. I, I'm i originally from Oklahoma, but I could say I grew up here in Denton. I went to the school here. I, I went to make our point when I was that age. And this, uh, this town has meant a lot to me. 
and I'm very sad to, to see what, what has happened here. Uh, could have been me that was attacked. Uh, you're a Dust Bowl family, I hear you've um, moved around a fair amount. Yeah, it was a tough time. Yeah, I know, I know that feeling. My family had the exact same experience. We moved, well, south, north, west, and back down south again once it was all over. It was, it was a reason I joined the army, and it wasn't because of the uh, employment opportunities elsewhere. I fully understand. We have a lot in common, and um, I think if we put our forces together, we can solve this, and we can we can make this town safe again. There's some lovely people here. I have no doubt there are some that are very kind. They bring me food all the time, more than I could ever possibly eat. If there's one thing Alabama is good for, it's the hospitality. But here's the one thing I want to get to the bottom of about this wonderful, loving community, Agent Faulkner. I drove along the route that she claims to have ran. I can see barely but a couple of houses that she might have been hammering the doors on. Now, I'm prepared to put it down to delirium. She could have been out of her mind with panic, given what she'd just witnessed. Whatever it was that she just witnessed. And if she had just, as she just claimed, lost an ear during the uh, incident, well, it could have been shock. But I don't know. It's part of her story that just don't add up. I agree. There is more to this, but uh, I believe you were correct in stopping the conversation where you did. We do not wish to inflict any any lasting harm on her here, and uh, we have some clues to work from. I shall uh, continue the search at the site tomorrow, and uh, I would appreciate it if you report anything you you find in, in your own search. I got one one question for you before you can go, Agent Faulkner. And believe me, I'm, I ain't interrogating you, so this is a it's a casual one. How familiar are you with uh, tent preachers? Tent preachers. You know those uh, evangelists that uh, put up like tents, bring communities together, and start preaching at them about damnation. They used to come by here, didn't they? They would come. Uh, there have been a couple around here recently. Uh, different kinds, uh, different denominations of the faith, but... The uh, reason I mention it is some of what she was babbling about, and she was squawking in that way before you came as well. I ain't never heard anyone speak in tongues like that outside of those ten preachers. Might be something worth asking. I don't know whether this Susie Wilkins is one of these uh, firm believers think she's got the devil inside her, or whether one of these preachers has been getting inside her head. Would you, uh, happen to know which which of these would be the most likely that she's connected with, or shall I have to speak to her family? Well, that's the thing. You may have to speak to her family, and uh, you may think it curious. Not a one of them has come out to see how she is. That is curious. Which tells me she's something of a black sheep. I did uh, stop by their house, said that their daughter had been in an accident. Despite the fact she got three siblings as well as the parents, they all took it on the chin, said they'd see her when she was better. And that was that. As far as I can tell, she lives with them. But they ain't coming to see her until she's well. As I say, as I keep saying, there's definitely something going on in this town. That much is for certain. I shall um, I'll make sure to go there and, uh, and have a conversation with them. And that ain't right. That is not right. And uh, this tent preacher uh, idea, I, I think you're onto something. It sounded like that. I've also heard men speaking in tongues, and that's the closest thing I can think of as well. Thank you, Jeffrey. Now we jump to Dr. White has been patiently waiting for us with his test tubes, vials, and Tesla coils, and everything else that he has set up in his small hotel room. Uh, what kind of hotel would uh, Dr. White have checked into? I can't imagine there's many in this area, but I'm prepared to say that there's a plush upstate one, probably an old uh, gothic building from the uh, mid-19th century. 
You're likely to have some kind of Motel 6 style building here too, and maybe a bed and breakfast. Uh, but Denton isn't a big town, so where would Dr. White uh, situate himself? I would have gone to the best accommodation I can afford, which is quite a bit. So I certainly would have gone to the finest motel this town has. Well, in that case, if you go for the finest establishment, you get uh, Missy's Hotel. It's just called Missy's. It has a bit of a reputation. It's on the outskirts of Denton, but it, uh, has, it survived the Civil War. Supposedly, it's uh, housed soldiers on either side at different par- parts of the American Civil War. And uh, it even came under siege at one point and still bears the scars. But this grand Gothic building is very popular and probably the thing Denton is most well known for outside of Denton. Certainly. Well, it's something. Still, I care not too much. All I cared was that I had a room with some space to conduct some initial experimentation. Of course, this is temporary. The funding I'll be receiving will get me far more equipment, but to start with, I have, of course, brought my basics with me. Hopefully enough to at least perform some cursory tests on this Fluid. I'm very curious to see how it reacts to certain other compounds, and possibly to see if I can get some bearing on what sort of fluid is it. Some sort of digestive fluid? Some sort of fluid from a strange substance? I, what could I be possibly find out from a cursory inspection? Could you do a science and intellect roll, please? And if you have any appropriate trademarks or tropes to use at this point? I think not. We'll go for a straight ten dice pool. Five successes. Five successes. Okay, that's uh, that, that's impressive. Uh, now, there are various scientist stunts you might be able to use, such as Forensic Eye. I was thinking of using Forensic Eye if you think it would be appropriate. Uh, yeah, I think that's... I think it's very much appropriate. So, the forensic eye stunt allows you to see more from clues than the obvious, and prepare to call this an investigation uh, challenge again. Um, you, now that you're alone with this substance, and you're able to take into account everything you've witnessed, there's definitely something going on that does not just concern a terrestrial threat. This isn't some garden variety fauna. This isn't some psychotic waiting in the hedgerows with a knife. There is something far deeper, more esoteric, that ties into some of your more unusual research. It's very much on the fringe, never accepted by the establishment, but you you have your theories, and if nothing else, this serves to compound them. On your raw investigation, you are quite able to see, under the microscope, that this substance isn't a digestive fluid, isn't a saliva. This appears to be a living entity all on its own, except in its crystallized form, how you currently have it, it would appear to be comatose. By the slow movement of its cells, and electrons, you could be forgiven for imagining it's in hibernation. Absolutely fascinating. The hours are ticking by as I've made these cursory examinations, but this discovery, an actual form of life, but defies any known species. At least I think so. It is at this point I frown as I... I'm not specialised in biology or even chemistry. Physics is my main field. I possibly will need some further assistance with this, but... But I wonder. I'll ask a question with one of those successes. Do I think I could figure out a way of waking it up? You are certain that you could. With a number of successes you rolled, with the use of your forensic eye, your base knowledge of alien life, yes, you, with the right equipment, are sure you could wake it up. And to be honest, when it comes down to it, knowing as little as you know about this creature, 
that it inhabits salt water. I'm fairly certain that that may be all it needs to send it back into a life-like substance. Immerse this crystalline fluid in salt water, and you might see it take on its true form. Absolutely incredible. I will ask one more question, and I feel that would then be most of the successes used. What applications could this have? Maybe it's too soon to know, but I'm very curious. What could it be used for, this life form? Well, this may require further study, but from what you can tell, at least from its behaviour, uh, if what little Dr. White knows of what Chip and Susie were doing a make-out point doesn't seem to imply they were doing anything hostile. Therefore, it could just be that this creature is territorial, and they happened to stop in an area that it holds dear. That means that it could be put to use in a defense mechanism. If such a creature was, let's say, situated in a Royal Navy dock, uh, it could prevent uh, an intruding force if it could be made to trust the Royal Navy, as an example. But that will be the ultimate question. Is it possible to communicate with it in any meaningful way and form an agreement with it and trust. I frown a little to myself because, to be honest, such things are not in my interests. I don't want to communicate with such a being. Could that even be possible? No, no, of course not, but hmm, it was for other purposes. No, I will need, I will need more than I have. No, I, I will need more than I have. I said I was going to make my phone call in the morning, but I'm going to make it now. I need to get people down here. Now, this could be something incredible. But it needs more equipment, more people. The caves need to be investigated as well. Hmm. And I shall, probably very late now, go down to the office of this hotel if I can, waking up whoever is there, not really caring if they are asleep or not. I need the phone immediately. Oh, oh, yeah, yes, yes, sir, of course, sir. The, the bellhop, um, take a provides you with a phone behind the reception, and he dials an outside line, uh, gets through to the operator, and he's prepared to connect the call unless you want to do it. I shall connect the call. It's not a number that most people can connect to. It is, of course, my contacts in the government. The reason I was here in the first place. My phone call is going to be very simple. There's been a change of plans. The weather experimentation. No longer required. I require a different team and different equipment. I shall be requiring a good few fellow scientists, ideally a biologist. I shall be requiring various investigative equipment, ideally for cave and marine environments. A chemist as well. Possibly holding cells. Possibly even aquatic exploration gear. I start reading off a list of things, and you would think the costs are going to be astronomical, but then I do, as a trope, have outside funding. The voice on the other end answers you simply once you have finished your shopping list. Dr. White. We have a file on Denton, and associated with what you are requesting... The file is redacted, and I am not authorized to give you the information within, but you are entitled to conduct your research as your funding permits it. I have to double check with you, knowing that there has been government activity in Denton before that appears to have been shut down prematurely, from what little I can tell. Are you certain you wish to stay this course? Of course, boy. Not to mention, the FBI are going to be involved as well. They will be carrying out some investigation of their own. An Agent Faulkner is involved, yes. Perhaps that will make things go a little easier this time, if the federal government are actually interested. At the end of the day, I am willing to, as always share my results. 
we will take that into consideration, Dr. White, and we will investigate this Agent Falconer for you to make sure that there is nothing you need to be concerned with. We will uh, call back on this number and leave a suitably coded message that you can understand to inform you whether there is any danger to your research. Of course, and get them down here as soon as you can. I understand it probably won't be too quick, but... The sooner the equipment and the men are here, the sooner we can begin. Trust me, this could be something you are interested in as much as I. This could be a breakthrough for the world. Very good, Dr. White. Have a good night. Hmm. And I hang up, and I return to my room. And before I go to bed, one more thing haunts my mind. The words the girl said... Something about them still rings, still resonates with me, doesn't it? And you can't help but keep glancing over to that vial you now have in a clamp. Stopper inside it, whatever's in there couldn't escape, surely, while you were asleep. It's, it's comatose, it's no danger to you at all. And yet, you've seen what it is capable of doing to steal. And you can guess what it's capable of doing to human flesh. You enter a very troubled sleep, filled with memories of your wife and unborn child. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played the campaign Terror at Makeout Point, for they came from beneath the sea. Our game master was the gentleman gamer, Matthew Dawkins, who also created the game. They Came From Beneath the Sea is published by Onyx Path Publishing, and we would like to extend a big thank you to them and to Matthew for doing this actual play project with us. The music for this episode is taken from the Cryo Chamber collaborations Cthulhu, Yogg-Sothoth, Azathoth, Shabnigarath, and Nyalathotep, and is used with permission from Cryo Chamber. Please check out cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for more of their lovely dark ambient. Finally, a big thank you to all of our Patreon backers. Creating all of this content would not be possible without your generous support on Patreon. You give us loads of energy, you help us cover our costs, and you open up time for us to record and edit. So, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you ever so much. See you again soon.